So welcome back once again. This is um, Kevin from CSMI in Australia. And uh, today I'm going to share with you uh, uh, the start sequence of this hydraulic excavator. It's pretty much the same uh, in most of the machines. And there's a few tips I want to show you before we go ahead. Uh, because there is a bit of confusion in regards to speed controllers. So uh, let's get this camera closer. Let me just explain this uh, by bringing this closer to you. Okay, so uh, this machine has got four speed controllers, two for the tracks, one for the car body rotation, and one for the hydraulic pump. Now, we all know that this is a receiver, and this is a transmitter or a radio. So I'm just going to bring that in focus, okay? So you call this a transmitter or a radio, and then you have a receiver um, inside your model. Now, the receiver generally will get power from a speed controller. But in this case, we've got four. So if you're going to put four speed controllers powering up this receiver, it's not really good. It could damage the receiver. Now, I have never seen this information shared anywhere. And even from the factory, it actually comes with all the four, all the four speed controllers powering this receiver, which is not good. Now, it's a simple process. All you have to do is just take the red wire out because each servo cable has got three wires, red for positive, black for negative and white or orange for signal. So once you take the red one, you haven't completed the circuit. Only the most powerful speed controller will power this. And in our case, it's the hydraulic motor, right? And the other three, I've disabled them. So that's going to safeguard my receiver. That's the first thing, okay? Now, the next thing we want to do is the start sequence. So I'm just going to readjust the camera, guys. So couple of things. Now, um, when we power this thing, you will hear a beep. And what the beep is, it's saying that the speed controller is saying, hey, I'm getting power. I'm ready to go. However, I'm not going to go because I need a signal from the radio. And my radio is off at the moment, right? Because my radio is up there. And hence, um, it's not going to arm itself. So let's go to that sequence and hear this particular beep. And this goes for all speed controllers. Okay, so if you're hearing that beep, it means it's ready to go, but there is no signal from the radio, right? So I'm going to refocus again. Now, there's two things in the radio, which is radio frequency transmission. So I'm going to do that first. Let it start up. Okay. So here, here you can clearly see, please select RF, which is radio frequency on or off. And I'm going to say on. Okay. Okay. So you can see it's got red and green. So both the signals are transmitting. However, um, sorry about that. However, it's still beeping. Now, it's beeping because, let me go to the right screen and share, share something else with you. Okay. So just to show you where I went, sorry, I'm trying to focus the camera and do it. So this is the home screen. We have a base function up here, B. I'm going to press that. And then I'm going to hit servo. So this shows me the status of all the servos, right? Now, uh, the pump is selected to, give me a sec, let me bring this up. Okay, the pump is selected to channel 7. And as you can see, it's still showing minus 51%, right? Now, when I go to zero, that's when it'll start. And I'll explain to you why. Okay, so it's gone to minus 100, which is zero, which is a starting point. Now, why does it do that? It does that because in case you have a plane or a motor and you give it power supply, what's going to happen? It's going to start and run, right? And if it's a plane or, or a blade, it's going to take your hand or your head off, right? So it has a fail-safe position it will not kick start until you actually go to the zero position and then it's ready to actually start again. So that means now if you see, I'm going to increase the percentage, which means I'm turning the dial. Right. So it's a fail safe method that before it starts, it must be in a zero position. Then it'll arm itself. It'll actually give you three beeps to tell you that is a 3S LiPo and then one beep after that, which is T-T-T-T and then it's ready to go. 
So uh, I hope you guys, um, I'm able to share that information clearly with you. If not, just leave uh, a comment below and I'll try to re-explain that uh, or email us and I'll try to help you with that again. So let's go ahead now and uh, see some of the functions, what we're assigned to what on the radio. Now, everything can be customized on the radio. You can change anything to anything. I can make any joystick go on any of these any of any of the boom bucket and any of the joystick so it's fully customizable there's no there's no problem you don't have you can either do it in there by swapping the channels with the servo cables or you can do it up here um, so firstly let's start the hydraulics now you can hear some funny sound I'm not sure if you can hear that's not normal because probably the oil in the tank is not up to a certain level so let me contract the cylinder and see how this that's better i don't know if you notice that okay so right hand joystick up and down is hooked up to the main boom okay right hand joystick left and right is hooked to the car body I'm trying to see if I can, uh, yeah, I hope this is better. Okay. Okay, now left hand joystick is hooked to the stick. And then left hand joystick is hooked again to, to the bucket. Okay. And then I've got two switches up here, one on either side and up here. So it's in focus and there's the other one up here. And this is connected to the tracks. Okay, so I'm using this one or I can use this one. So to stop it, I'm going to stop the hydraulics first completely. Then I'm going to power the radio off. And then I can just disconnect the battery. So that's pretty much uh, it on this on this particular video. As usual, thanks for watching. If you have any questions in regards to the receiver or the radio transmission or anything, uh, please let me know down in the comments or email us at info at CSMI. And I'm happy to help you. As usual, thanks for watching. And this is Kevin from CSMI in Australia.